Love makes faith work. As you can see, I still got my pajamas on. I ain't even changed yet because I felt like this word is a word that needs to be given. It's a right now word. All I did was go through my little edges real quick, throw these little glasses on, put on a little lip gloss because my lip gloss is popping. And I just wanted to share this message with you because it blessed my heart. See, many of us are in need of certain things, whether it's healing, you got financial problems, maybe you're even looking for your spouse, right? And you've been believing God, right? You, or, you, or you think you've been believing God. See my quotation marks. You think you've been believing God and operating in faith. Yet you go back home and when you're alone by yourself at night, you're doubting if God heard your prayer. You're worried about if God's going to come through for you or not. You're worried about if you are going to be healed with the, from, because of, from the diagnosis that the doctor gave you. You are acting in unbelief. And we know the Bible says that anyone who wavers, we shouldn't expect anything from God because you're a double-minded man. You're saying one thing, but behind closed doors, your heart is really meditating on something else. So God gave me this revelation, man, about how love ignites faith. It makes our faith work. And what is that love? You ask? Dun, 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 dun. That love is the knowledge of the love that God has for you. Woo! When I say that blessed me, when I say that that really ignited my faith and it made my faith work so much easier, the moment I started to meditate on and truly realize just how much God loves me, it made faith work easy. It, it, it made it, it, it was no longer complicated. It was no longer complicated. The Bible says that faith worketh by love. And what is that love? It's the knowledge of the love that God has for you. Because see, if you truly knew just how much God loved you, then you wouldn't doubt when he says that I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. You wouldn't doubt that healing wouldn't come to pass. You wouldn't doubt if you are going to be healed because you know his word says by his stripes you were healed. If you truly understood, Paul said, mm, Paul said, we need to get to know the depth, the height. There's a depth to the love of God. There is a height to the love of God. There is a length. There is a width. There is a measurement that we could never even truly measure the amount of love that God has for us. He said we should be rooted and grounded in the love of God. And when that happens, when we truly, oh, when we truly know just how much God loves us, it knocks out all unbelief. It knocks out all worry. And then you might ask yourself, well, what's, what's wrong with unbelief? Or what's wrong with a little bit of doubt here and there? The Bible says that anybody that comes to God, you must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him, right? And it also says that if you come asking of him, then you must ask in faith. He said, because the person that doubts shouldn't expect to receive anything from him because you are like a wave tossed by the sea. You're back and forth in your mind. You're double-minded. And then you say things like, well, I'm not double-minded. I walk around all day speaking the word of God out my mouth. Yeah, you're speaking it, but when, when you're by yourself, what are the meditations of your heart? How many times have you really doubted in your heart? And this is not, this is things that people can't see, right? That's why God says, he looks at that, that man looks on the outer appearance. We look at everything we see. We look at the way that a person looks and we think that that is sufficient enough for me, for us to believe what a person is saying or what they're going to do. But God looks at the heart. It's not so, it, it's not enough to just say what you believe. It really has to become real to you and your heart. So when you really get to know the love that God has for you and it becomes rooted and grounded in your heart, man, the next time you had a doctor and that doctor say, you got such and such and you got five days to live. Let me explain to you. This is what you need to do. 
God loves me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He sent his word and he healed me by the stripes of Jesus. I am healed. That's being rooted and grounded in the love of God. That's being rooted and grounded in his promises that he has for your life. Not based on what this world says, not based on what your bank account is telling you, because your bank account is probably telling you right now that you don't even have enough money. You don't even have enough money to go through the car wash. But yet you got to humble yourself and anchor yourself in the love that God has for you. And you got to tell yourself, you got to reassure your own heart. No, God said that he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. You got to go to war with your mind when everything else around you is seeming like it's not going to come to pass. It's not going to happen. Get to know just how much he loves you. When your children is acting up and you got that one wayward child, God loves me. And God loves that child too. And you hold on to that love that God has for you. Why? Because it makes your faith in him works. The more you understand how much God loves you, the more it will ignite ignite your faith to work. And then let me tell you something. I know many of you probably struggle too, because I'm going to be honest. I am a, somebody who struggled for years, not even years, decades to believe that God loves me. I struggle with that. Some of us come from earthly parents, right? Now, listen, my parents did the best that they can do. Shout out to Mark and Michelle. They did, and Denise, I'm sorry, I forgot about my lovely stepmom, but listen, Shout out to them three because they did the best that they can do for me as they were raising me, right? Nobody was perfect. But sometimes we as as people, we struggle to differentiate between God as a heavenly father and then our earthly parents, right? You got to understand that our earthly parents, they had their own child upbringing too. They made their mistakes in their life too. But we have a, we serve a heavenly father who makes no mistakes, right? We serve a heavenly father who does no wrong, who keeps his word. I am a parent of five beautiful children right now, right? There are times I have made a promise to my children, like we're going to go do this this weekend. And there's times where things may have come up. I may have been tired or somebody may have, I don't know, canceled other plans and we may not have been able to go, go follow. I may not have been able to follow through on my own word, but I'll tell you this. We serve a God whose word is his bond. He never breaks his word. If his, if he ever breaks his word, this whole world will be doomed. We wouldn't even be here right now. The stars will be falling from the sky. The remember the Bible, but the Bible says that God upholds this world by his word. Everything that's operating right now is because God's word. He commanded the seeds to only be able to go this far. It's being held back in certain areas because of his word. We, we have the, the sun come up during the day. The moon comes up at night because of the word of God. So God's word is his bond. He's going to come through and he's going to keep his promise. Many of you have to get past whatever relationships you may or may not have had with your parents, because if you don't, that will keep you from being able to truly and fully trust God, trust the character of God. Not, not everybody comes from parents who had good character or who display good character. Some of you may not even grow up, may not have even grown up with parents. Some of you may have been in foster care and some of you may not even truly know what the love of a biological parent is. Some of you may not even know how that, what that connection is like, but I'm here to tell you that you have a heavenly father that loves you. He loves you so much. He is for you. He is not against you. He wants the very best for your life more than you want the best for your life. He wants what's best for you more than anybody in this world could ever want what is best for you. And if you can just get that knowledge, that revelation, get that revelation. Because see, revelation is when something becomes real to you. Many of you may have just the knowledge. You may have heard a pastor say, God is love. He loves you. He wants you. You may have heard all of those things. But until it becomes real to you, until it is made a revelation to you, you continue to struggle. 
You'll continue to doubt whether or not he wants you to prosper. You'll continue to doubt, God, do you want me to experience a good, healthy relationship or am I going to have to keep running into counterfeits? If God told you no, it's because he loves you. If God didn't lead you to that job, it's because he loves you. If God didn't open that door, it's because he loves you. If he closed the door, it's because he loves you. I used to think that God was trying to keep certain things from me in my life until I started realizing that God God did what he did because he loved me. So the next time things don't work out the way that you thought it should have worked out. Cause remember he also said in his word, he also said that my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways, your ways. Trust him. You don't have to always get to the end of a situation and find out just how bad it was for you to realize why God was trying to tell you no in the first place. You don't have to go to the doctor and get a bad health report for you to wake up and realize I should not have ate in all those pack of hot flame of hot Cheetos like that in a month. I probably should have included some fruit in my diet. And now I'm over here suffering diabetes because I just didn't wait on the Lord. Or I didn't believe, excuse me if I burped, or I didn't believe the word of God that said that he is the God of all comfort. And instead of me running to him to comfort me, I decided to go spend my whole check on liquor or go spend my whole check on Christmas trees, right? And find, thinking that I was going to find comfort in that, and I didn't. It was temporary. I was thinking that if I was to find a man for me to be with, I thought that it was going to fulfill certain desires that I had in me because I was insecure because I needed validation because I wanted acceptance. And it's crazy how I found all of that in the word of God. I found all of that in the word of God. I found out that I am accepted in the beloved. I found out that God validated me because he said that before I chose you, I knew you in your mother's womb and I predestined you. I set you apart I was looking for love when the Bible says that God is love. Everything that I was ever looking for in a man, I found in God. Woo! I'm preaching right now. Am I? (laughs) Can I get an amen? (laughs) Listen, everything that I was ever searching for, mm, I found it in God. I found it in the love of God. Listen, it is my prayer that you guys will get lost in the love of God. It is my prayer that you would fill your thoughts up every single day. I don't care if you got to open your mouth and you got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to look yourself in the eye and you got to say, God loves you. Don't you dare give up. God is for you. Don't you dare let go. God is for you. Keep going. I don't care if you got to look yourself in the mirror every day and say that. God loves you. God loves you. Not the person behind you. God loves you. Not the person that's out here thinking that they got it all right and they going to heaven because they perfect. No, God loves you. Not the person that they think that their righteousness is is going to what bring, bring them into heaven too. God loves you. Not the person that thinks that they got it all right because they know the word of God. God loves you, the imperfect you, the person that makes promises that can't keep them, you, the person that keeps messing up, you, he loves you. And I pray that you would get the knowledge, the revelation, because knowledge has to come first before it becomes revelation. I pray that you would hear me on today and understand that God loves you. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Please like and subscribe and share this video with somebody that is in need. Maybe they are sick. Maybe they are going through financial loss. Maybe their heart is hurting because they lost loved ones, whatever it is. Send this video to somebody because it will bless them. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. God bless.